get up in there? How are you? Here, I'll pick you up. I'll, get you <laughs> up. <laughs> I'll pick you up. <laughs> you're right up in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is uh, Heaven Hill. Heaven Hill bottled in bond. Yeah. From Jim Nash. What? Jim Nash, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> Now this is the old version that they discontinued last year. Okay. Uh, and they said at the time, we're discontinuing the Bottled and Bond bourbon. Yeah. Which was heartbreaking to a lot of people. It was a really affordable Bottled and Bond. Okay. A lot of people said it competed easily with $40 bourbons. So and specify, and clarify, Bottled and Bond means? Bottled and Bond means uh, at least four years old, bottled at 100 proof, made by one distillery in one distillation season, one distiller. And one distillery and one distillation season. Right. Um, and meeting all the requirements of straight and beyond. It's a lot of requirements to get there. It's a lot of requirements. And, and yeah, I think you have to be fairly comfortable with, if you're doing a bottle and bond bourbon type of deal, mm -hmm. or I guess this is a charcoal filtered thing, it's still, once you get the requirements of the category, then you get the requirements of the bottled and bonds. Yeah. And that's going to be a very specific kind of whiskey. Well, and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but it just means it met all the legal requirements of right. bottled and bonds. Right. But, right. It's, but it sounds good on it Sounds good, yeah. Bottled and bond. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. So they discontinued it because they were running out of old whiskey stocks, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this year they announced they're re releasing it. Okay. And they're re releasing it $40. Okay. Oh, so more than what it was. Twice as much oh. as what it was. Oh, wow, goodness. Now, a lot of people had said, you know, it was worth $40 before. Because it competes with Woodford and all these really expensive bourbons. What's or reasonable deal? bourbons. What's the deal with the cork? That's our Eleanor cork because right. the screw cap broke off. How does the screw cap break? It just, it just fell over and it cracked the screw cap. I'm spending 40 damn dollars of Jim Nash's now, this was money. Only, this is only $20. Of Jim Nash's money. I need a screw cap that stays on. This is the old one. Okay. The new one is different. Okay. Well, then the new one, that's where the extra money went. Yeah. Into yeah. the quality the screw of the that, that won't break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My guess is the new one doesn't have a screw cap if they're going to charge $40 for All right. it. And it's, and it's, are they saying it's the same whiskey? Old no, same? no. It's actually, I think, uh, one year older. This is six year old. I think they're releasing a seven year old. Okay. Has the new bottled and bond standard. Okay. And, and, um, the rumor was, look, a lot of people for a long time said right. the bottled and bond Heaven Hill six year old is easily worth uh, 50 to 100% more money for the quality of drink it is. Okay. And it's an amazing budget drink. Sure. So what, essentially what Heaven Hill did was, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> so they pulled it from the market and then re-released it as a more... So, lesson learned, with its if you love something, never talk free. about it. Oh, that's a sting song. My yes. bad. <laughs> if you love someone... No, you cage it and you just... Never let it go. So I'm on the nose. Oh, it's a uh, really nice on the nose. I still get all the classic things. I'm getting a thin sweet woodiness. Mm-hmm. It is woodiness. bright and sparkly, and it does have a sharp. There's the. Uh, I think I'm getting the alcohol right there with, yeah, it with jumps. that wood note with that oak. Just bop. There's the alcohol, and it, for the fifty percent. Yeah. All right. Bottled and bond. I guess it has to be. No, I I think they're right. This is a nice. Not boring, slightly spicy, classic bourbon. Oh yeah. So it's uh There's the oh, candy cherry. Less note. less alcohol bite than I was expecting. Yeah, on the taste. The yeah. nose is a little more The taste is more interesting than the nose. I'm thinking just uh just some generic sweet woodiness. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just gonna be, you know, kind of a thin budgety type of bourbon. No 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 no. There's multiple things going on there. Oh there's, the little water it opens up. There's more depth to that uh, that sweetness. It's a nice, mm. With a little water, it gets a little less uh, I sharp. I haven't added water yet. It's a floral cherry note mm -hmm. with the, I can't decide if that's more of an apple sweetness or a honey sweetness. Uh, but it's bourbon. I think it's, I think it's apple sweetness. We're squarely in bourbon territory here. Absolutely. Although now that you said apple and honey together, all I picture is yeah. those cheese boards where you get apple slices and then one of the little honeycomb. The charcuterie. Yeah, and you just chomp, mm -hmm. add a little water, opens up the nose and the taste, but the nose gets a little more of uh, depth and mid-range richness. It gets sweeter too at the same time. Yeah. Or maybe just subsides the alcohol enough that you can actually smell the sweetness. Oh yeah, it does, well, just get a little bit more um, thickness. Man, a little bit more rich. When this used to be like $20 more, a, a bottle. More velvety texture. 
I mean, you could treat that all day for twenty dollars a bottle. For twenty damn dollars. That's camping bourbon right there. Now, if uh, the new thing, we don't have the new thing, right? Uh. -uh. Is it out yet? I don't. I think they've announced it. I don't know if it's released. Okay, I'd be interested to compare the new thing to this yeah. to see if it's worth double the money because that's pretty damn good for twenty dollars. Yeah, I agree. But at a forty dollar price point, now you are rubbing shoulders with some stiff competition there. Yeah. And yeah. they are stiff. Okay, so let's try the next one. Fully stiff. Which is, uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you a little story. Okay. We got this whiskey, and then I went to start reviewing it. Yeah. And, Which and whiskey? researching it. Easy Rider. And um, I realized what I was going to say about it. So I called the guy who donated it and said, so hey, no, I, do not read names. <laughs> I said, hey, I'm about to talk about this on camera, and here's what I'm going to say. He said, why don't you go ahead and make it an anonymous donation? <laughs> Mr. Anonymous, you magnificent bastard. Fight. So he donated it. This is Easy Rider. But again, the point is to not ever send something in that we love. Yeah. It's something that it doesn't exist here. That's the point. So yeah. whether or not we love it, did you scare him off getting an? Imp no, there's a reason. I'm not gonna say on camera. All right. Okay. All right. So this is Kentucky bourbon. Okay. And it's ten, uh, not ten. This is just a four-year-old bourbon. So far, so it's only two years younger than this. So far on the nose, you're not scaring me off, man. It's uh, it's sourced by Hood River Distillers in Oregon. Okay. Right. But they call it extra smooth. You know why? Because it's just. I think they just filter it a little bit. Because that it sells when yeah. things smooth. And somebody who did a write-up on them in their newspaper in their area said, Oh, and, and you um, you get less of a hangover with Easy Rider bourbon because of their patented distillation technique that removes all of the fusel ills that cause a hangover. That's not really a thing. It's not a thing. So, their fusel oils... Now, hold on. Allegedly. Yeah. Right, go ahead. <laughs> so, I don't know that they claimed that, but whoever wrote the article, maybe they were talking about the filtration and they said distillation. Okay. Maybe it wasn't their fault. Sure. Maybe. Well, maybe they just were using the incorrect terminology. Yes, it's possible. Trying to give them the benefit uh, of the doubt. Sure, sure. But here's the thing: they, a lot of people say this. They say, oh, "We filter out all the things that give you a hangover." That's, That's why we're. So you know what's what they're talking about is there's two things that give you a hangover. Right. There's drinking causing dehydration that works any alcohol right and then there's a thing called fusel oils also known as congeners mm -hmm. which are these long chain esters created during fermentation that are left in in the wider cuts of a brown liquor okay and that's what gives whiskey flavor yeah right now they're also mildly poisonous Right, sure. which makes your body react to them a little bit. Well, but you can get like mad hangovers with yeah. clear liquor. Yes, you can if you drink yeah. enough, because the majority of a hangover in drinking right. is coming from overconsumption of alcohol. Right. It's not like it's you can the... drink yourself right. faced and wake up with no hangover because it was vodka. Right. Right. It doesn't work that way. Maybe you. Can. So all these people who are like, oh yeah, we filter ours out, so it's less of a hangover problem. You're talking about something that's causing about ten to twenty percent of the hangover. 80% is, hey, don't drink so much. Now, now, hold on. Are you just trotting out numbers? I'm just making it up numbers. anecdotal numbers. The study that right. uh, gave no numbers to it, right. but the study said when we were comparing the effects of vodka versus brown liquors with more congeners and fusel oils. Sure. And then the over-drinking of those things. Yeah. The effects of the change just because the fusel oils were so negligible that further study is needed to prove that it's even a thing. Oh, so... Beyond just your whatever anecdotal numbers you're throwing out, it could be significantly less. Yes. Negligible is, yeah, it's hard They're to tell. Saying, it's hard to tell. There was a mild difference, but not enough to really define anything. Further Sounds studies like needed. the need for an experiment. No, oh, I don't want to hang over experiments. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, so this is a 40% alcohol whiskey. The nose is not offensive. It's no, fairly... Just, it's musty, though. It's, like, mu it's a musty sweetness. Like... And like a musty, I'm gonna say floral again. It's a different kind of um, mm. bouquet. It's got this weird bland brown sugar and watered down flavor because that 40 percent. So it just tastes like a really boring brown sugar whiskey. <laughs> brown sugar, putting in some extra white granulated sugar. Yeah, and then um, eventually you get to a little bit of a bitter barrel finish. Sort there. of. You eventually. It's so mild. Eventually, no. This is 40 percent, and it feels and tastes like 40 percent. 
but it's not, you know, uh, horrific. It's just fairly tame. Yeah, I feel like that bitterness, it starts, for me, it starts down the path of giving you some barrel and then goes, nah, nah, f*** it. Right. And then there's just sweet leftovers. Yeah, and then again, the brown, the brown sugar is a predominant sweetness, yeah. and then you get the granulated sugar in there. And then, compared to that Heaven Hill. Oh, yeah, well, there's also 10% more alcohol in that. And two years older. But it feels like a lot more than 10% more flavor. And not filtered out. A lot more than 10% Even though this is charcoal filtered. Uh, yeah, I saw that. This is twice the flavor, though. No, is I there, mean, m more than twice the flavor to the Easy Rider. They're not usually doing charcoal filtering in Kentucky whiskeys, are they? In Kentucky and bourbon? No, that's that Tennessee thing. That's a more thing. Tennessee thing, yeah. But they charcoal filtered this. Okay. All right. We, uh, we Jeffrey Rollins. Ha ha. Every time Rex asks Siri a question, my video pause because I watch you guys every day at work on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> With a couple people saying, can you stop doing hey, hey Siri? <laughs> hey Siri. I'm not going to play this game right now. You should get back to reviewing whiskey. <laughs> hey Siri. <laughs> look, uh, look, my phone's going off. Oh yeah, yours is going off. Because I recognize my voice. All right. <laughs> All right. Hey Google. <laughs> hey Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> it pissed off like 40% of, of the people. It's like, you asshole. Uh, Whiskey Wizard, hey guys, I was wondering if over time you have noticed your tastes change with the seasons. For me, it seems almost cyclical. I started my whiskey journey in the winter where peaty, smoky, meaty whiskey was my favorite right away. In the spring, I tend to reach for space sides with more sweet and floral tones. In the summer, I surprisingly started to love Bourbon. Which is funny because I started out on my journey really disliking bourbon. Now I find it hard to drink Islas in the summer. Mm -hmm. Was wondering if you experienced anything similar. I'm going to answer his question as asked and just say, yes, I agree, but uh, but with what you mean, I don't think what you say. My tastes don't change. Right. But uh, my cravings change. Okay. Yeah. Right. So you still like the same things, but whether and or not. And I think that's what he's saying. What you, what, yeah, what you're in the mood for at any given moment. Yes. I would, I would think so, yeah. Yeah, and no, so, because yeah. uh, you're right, when it's hot, when it's 105 degrees sitting outside at night, yep. and you're sitting on the back deck, yep. a dense, heavy, rich, smoky whiskey is like. Whew, yeah, you need something a little I bit. Need something a little more. Light and refreshing. And yeah, to counteract the body heat going on. Fair anyway. enough. All right, okay. here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may I fight for a friend? If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink. Hey, Siri. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.